The GX9 is one of the most underrated cameras out there. Even now, after so many years after its release, it still has the capabilities of competing with some of the best cameras on the market. With the resurgence of street photography, this might be a model you are searching for. It has a 20 megapixel sensor with 4K video capability, so this camera produces great quality photos and videos. All the footage that is not of the GX9 will be shot with the GX9, and mainly in the Vivid profile. The design is surprisingly great. The look and the feel is on par with anything else on the market. I have not held a Leica in my hand before, but I'm guessing this camera has that type of solid feel. It's built out of a piece of metal. The buttons feel solid and the overall body has some weight to it, which helps with the solid feel. And it also gives the sense of quality. The ergonomics are fine. It's not extremely comfortable, but surprisingly more than adequate. And you can always buy a grip for it if you want it to be more comfortable but I just leave it as it is, and I'm not found it to be a problem at all. The screen is great, punchy and bright, and it's also a touchscreen, which is very responsive. The X100V was praised for having a screen that was designed to be unobtrusive, and the fact that you could pull out the screen without you even noticing it. That feature is pretty cool. I think the GX9 is the same way. It's designed so well that you don't even notice you can pull it out. You can also vertically tilt it, which is a preferred screen for photographers, so I think that's nice because people would use this as the main photography camera. I also want to mention the menu system, which is one of the best on the market, if not the best, at least when you compare it to Sony and Fuji. The letters are bold and clear, and everything is organized so well, and it makes this camera a perfect contender for a great beginner's camera. Let's take a look at the buttons, flash, and other elements of the camera. It has an autofocus switch button on the back for easy focus mode change. I don't think the GX80 had that, so that's a nice improvement. It has a mode button and exposure compensation dial right under, which feels sturdy and has some resistance to it, which is nice. So you don't accidentally turn the dials. It has flash built in, which comes in handy if you want to take photos of people at events where it can be a bit dark. And honestly, I am a bit surprised of how nicely it's integrated into the body. The GX9 only has one SD card slot, so if you want to be able to save your recordings and photos on two cards simultaneously, you obviously cannot do that here. What about the color profile and the photo quality? It comes pre-installed with a bunch of profiles, but the two I can recommend is the natural profile and the vivid profile. The natural if you want to have a pleasing image that will be desaturated, kind of like a log profile, then this would be a nice profile to shoot in and it leaves a lot of room for some grading afterwards so if you take this photo for instance that is in shot in natural profile without any adjustments to the settings you can see it's a bit desaturated and in order to give it a little bit of life a little bit of range and color you pull up the highlights and pull down the shadows and you can get this photo instead so the natural color profile is very gradable but out of the camera it's a bit demotivating to look at but if you want the JPEGs to look great right out of the cameras, use the Vivid Profile instead, which adds a bit of contrast. And there's not a whole lot of room afterwards, but still should be fine for a bit of color grading in post. For some reason, people, they don't mention that you can also play around with the settings on a Panasonic camera. Fuji does not have a pattern on that. You can actually get some beautiful JPEGs right out of the GX9. The details of the photos you take are great. The camera has 20 megapixel sensor with no anti-aliasing filter, so there should be an increase in sharpness compared to its predecessor. So it should result in some very fine photos with great high dynamic range. One thing I do wish in regards to color profiles is that they added the cinema-like V profile you can find on a GH5. I think that probably would have been more true to life than the Vivid profile. So what about the video capabilities of the camera? It can shoot up to 4K 30 frames per second or full HD 60 frames per second. There's no 10-bit recording, so everything is shot in 8-bit, but the image is still pleasing and yields great results. And honestly, sometimes that's all you want from your videos. For the footage you can see now, I have used the Vivid Profile without changing any of the settings or grading the footage at all. This is just straight out of the camera, and as you can see, the colors look pleasing. This camera could be great for content creation. It's not functionally better than a GH5, G9, or a GH6, mainly, I guess, because of the screen and more recording options. But pretty much anything else, it can do the same. So this could be your one and only camera for photography and videography. 
It also has IBIS and Panasonic is known for having incredible IBIS and this camera does not disappoint either. You can check out this handheld shot which is shot in 4K 30 frames per second with IBIS turned on. No heating. I just wanted to mention this, for some reason the Panasonic cameras are much cooler than other brands, even after a good use. Panasonic does not show any signs of any sort of heating and the GH5 for instance has never overheated on me which I think is pretty wild whereas the Fuji's can get a bit hot at times and Sony's is known for having some heating issues. The battery life. So the camera uses a fairly small battery but I found the battery life to be okay. It's not the best. I would recommend to turn it off when not using it, but otherwise just get some extra batteries just in case. So what about the autofocus? Panasonic gets a lot of heat for having bad autofocus and I think for stills, it's fine. Granted that you turn on in-body image stabilization and keep the shutter speed above 200 not to introduce any intentional, unintentional motion blur, excuse me. In video mode, it's fine as well, but the problem is it does hunt and focus breathe. And in some instances, I wish I could rely on the autofocus a lot more. A lot of the time, I just switch into manual mode when I shoot video, and I think that's fine. But on rare occasion, it still introduces some focus breathing even in manual mode. I don't know if I'm doing something wrong here though, please let me know in the comments if I am. I think for stills photography, you'll be fine, and there would not be any critical issues. And honestly, it's actually better autofocus than Fuji's at times. I think Panasonic gets a bad rep for autofocus because they compare it to Canon and Sony. But otherwise for photography it's gonna be great and for video i think it'll be more subpar but i think it can be usable at times the only shortcoming i could genuinely find is not even a shortcoming but it's the way the electronic viewfinder is designed it has a vertical tilt so you can move it up and down i just don't like that maybe it has a use case and maybe i would be more favorable towards that type of design if i had a use case but i have not gained anything from it and i just prefer it to be solid and just baked into the camera it's a small thing, but I just like that design a lot more that everything is in one piece. I have bought the X100V and for that reason contemplating whether to keep the GX9 or sell it. Mainly because I don't want to have the thought in the back of my mind of having to use the GX9 and it's just stressing me out to have the camera sitting on the shelf. I have sold cameras and lenses in the past and I have never really regretted it because I knew I had to move on from those elements. But the GX9 is probably a camera I would regret selling, but hopefully I can pick one up in the future again. The X100V has color profiles where the colors are already baked into the photo and if you want to get true to life colors, you will have to correct the colors a lot more than with the GX9. I think Panasonic just has some exquisite true to life colors that honestly is underrated. I think you would be happy with either GX9 or an X100V, they're both great cameras. The first time I shot with the Fuji and I transferred those files to my computer and looked at the files, the colors looked amazing right out the camera, which I was taken aback by and the design really spoke to me as well. With that said, I still would have preferred to be able to change the lenses on X100V like you can with the GX9, especially when Fuji also has smaller primes that would have looked amazing with it. Another thing I want to mention is how snappy the GX9 feels. The menu system, the overall feel, just it just all seems there's no clutter at all. It could be just the way it's designed, I don't know, but I could be wrong, but it just feels like it's a lot faster to use in general than other cameras I've used. What about the lenses? If you already have bought into the Micro Four Thirds system, then you probably already have all the lenses you need. But if you don't have that, I would recommend their smaller wider angle lenses like the Leica 15mm or something like the 17mm Olympus which I don't own but I have very good things about. And probably the most underrated lens for street photography is a zoom lens. So either the 1260 Lumix or the 1260 Leica version. You could also add a 25mm either the Lumix or the Leica Lumix version or an Olympus version. Then you're pretty much set for any occasion not only for street photography. If I sell the GX9, it would be the first sold product that I would regret selling. The fact that Panasonic has not capitalized on the street photography market by releasing a successor to the GX9 is very disengaging, if I have to be honest with you. When they added face detect to the S5 Mark II and not the GH6, I felt like they're abandoning the system. So I don't know where they go from here. I'm just surprised how well the GX9 performs even in 2023. It's possibly one of the best street photography cameras on the market. If you factor in price, you obviously have to get a lens for it and it will increase the price a bit, 
but still one of the best and if I was not so heavily invested into the Fuji system now, I probably would have used this camera more. If you're looking for a GX9, you should be able to pick it up secondhand in a great condition for around $400 or $500 brand new.